Imagine how it would be if when you arrive home tonight, after this talk, you have all your chores done for you without human intervention. I'm going to tell you a story of how one day survey robots are going to do this for you. When I was a little kid, I had a gift. At the age of five, and from then on, I could design and create clothing for my dolls. <laughs> from any piece of fabric, I could cut it and sew it in amazing ways. I still have all my creations since then. It was so easy for me, I was so much into it, that I could spend hours being present and absolutely loving what I was doing. When the time arrived to go to college, my desire was to study fashion design. But it was too far away from home and my parents just couldn't afford it. So I thought, what is my next best option? I studied computer science, I became a professor, and I did my PhD in artificial intelligence. And somehow I managed to find art and creativity in my profession, and I really love it. Although I need to confess that I still have glimpses of visions of my first passion, and I hope someday I can do something with it. What was your desire? What was your gift? Did you pursue it? Do you dedicate time a day to do what you love to do? I found in myself that life goes on, and I find little time a day to dedicate to my creativity. And I have a very good job, but we have uh, obligations and jobs that require little of our intelligence, sometimes nothing. And a lot, <laughs> a lot of things to do when we arrive home. And if you are parent, uh, as I am, how many thousands of times do we repeat, brush your teeth, please? or pick up the clothes from the floor, please. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we have some help to do some of those chores so we, have, we found time for ourselves to do what we love to do? In fact, we have been receiving some help since 1973. For 50 years now, we have had industrial robots doing repetitive tasks for us like uh, assembling or painting cars in manufacturing facilities. We all have seen them. They are m our manipulators that repeat the same task and therefore the same program very precisely. They are not very good with the, when, when the environment changes. They have what I call quantitative intelligence. What we all see emerging in the next three to five years are service robots. Service robots are semi or fully autonomous robots and perform services for us in unstructured environments without continuous human intervention. They have normally wheels or legs and they need to perceive and interpret the environment with onboard sensors. They all, they, they, the level of intelligence that they require, the service robots require, is much higher than the level of intelligence required for industrial robots. Examples of service robots are our beloved Curiosity robot, who is exploring Mars since August 2012, or the driverless car from Google. As it happened with the personal computers, we now cannot imagine how many things service robots can do for us. I did my PhD thesis in qualitative models applied, applied to space and time for robots. Quantitate, qualitative models are the opposite to quantitative models. Quantitative models deal with numbers, measurements, statistics and probabilistics, while qualitative models deal with names, tags, 
comparisons and relationships. I'm going to give you an example of qualitative models. Restaurant A is closer from where we are than restaurant B. Or another example, your brother Peter is taller than your brother Daniel. You are also taller than your brother Peter. And there is a very nice thing that happened with quali qualitative models, and it's the automatic reasoning process that can infer new knowledge from the knowledge that we already know. Like, you are also taller than your brother Daniel. I formalized, implemented in computer programs, and integrated many of these qualitative models for my thesis. And I apply them to the movement of simulated robots through the streets of my town in Spain. And I wrote a book. I didn't like it very much when a peer of mine told me back then, this thesis is very theoretical. You don't have anything practical or useful here. And I didn't, it was true. <laughs> I didn't like it because I really wanted to provide something useful for people. After that, that thesis, I went to present the results of the research to a conference in Japan. And there there were these two little pet robots, a cat and a dog. You can see here the picture of a dog. The movements were so smooth and so real, I absolutely fell in love with them. I thought, I want to work with real robots like those. It was about then when I had that strong intuition that, which is always the beginning of science, that the theoretical qualitative models that I developed for my thesis were going to give the kind of intelligence to serve a robot that is closer to the intelligence human beings have and deal with the space and time in our physical environment. At that time, I created a research group and we didn't know anything about robotics. Eight years later, and a lot of work, passion and determination from me and my team, and also a lot of frustrations and rejections because we were working against the status quo in the field of robotics and many other challenges. We put all the pieces together and I knew I had something useful and practical for people. At our company, we created the first brain, the first artificial brain that contains qualitative intelligence. This is the picture of the brain. And it can be installed in any vehicle to transform it into an autonomous vehicle that performs services for us, different tasks without human intervention. The brain is still in an embryonic state. It can incorporate more intelligent capabilities by using cloud robotics. It has already been test tested in autonomous scrap machines and in other services robots like the one in the picture. It now is being integrated into our own robotic platform. The main benefit of qualitative models is the higher level of abstraction that helps to deal with the, uncertain, the natural uncertainty of the sensors of the robot and also help to create automatically the map of any environment as well as decision making, among other things. I haven't succeeded yet. There is still no person that has more free time thanks to our service robots with qualitative intelligence. <laughs> but my desire has driven me to here, and it will continue doing so. I will leave you with one question. If you had a service robot working for you in your daily life, what would you do with your free time? Thank you.